children's message. Our first uh, unison scripture reading is Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 through 20. Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 through 20. And we'll read that together. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, as the Lord your God will bless you in the name you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish you shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Love the Lord God, obeying him and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the Lord. So have you two ever heard of the, the Ten Commandments? Moses comes down and he has these tablets and to tell the people how they should live. And there are some, um, I'm going to read them for you. There, there's some statements. And, there's, and, uh, and then there's a lot of don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Right? And it can feel like, ever had your hand slapped? Should I ask that? Right? Don't do that. Don't touch that. Don't. Right? And, and sometimes, have you ever been in a situation where it's like, no, 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 no. And you want to go, well, what can I do? Right? So... Um, I'm going to read for you, again, what uh, the Ten Commandments are, but I'm going to say them again, but in positive ways. Instead of, you know, they say, thou, sh thou shalt not, you shall not, we're going to turn into, into a positive statement. Okay? So the original is, I'm the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. Um, we're going to say, I, I put it this way, choose God back. God chooses you. Choose God back. You shall not make for yourself an idol. Again, you shall not, right? When you realize something is leading you away from God, choose God again. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of your God, is it, right? And we can put it, the, words have power. Use them wisely. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. This is something for everybody to hear. Life is more than work. <laughs> Remember to just be and be glad. Honor your father and mother. This is a good one for all of us. Honor and love your parents even when you think they're wrong. You shall not murder. Do no harm. You shall not commit adultery. Honor your commitments and those of others. You shall not steal. If it's not yours, don't take it. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Speak the truth. You shall, not, uh, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Appreciate what you have. Right? There's sometimes when um, hearing something in a positive way, how we can put ourselves, can be really, really helpful versus the... Because sometimes the people... <laughs> and some people talk about like schools that they went to when they were kids where there was... Um, I don't think you can do this anymore. Uh, but they would talk about, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to blast the Catholic Church. But there's always somebody who went to Catholic school um, who tells a story about the nuns with their ruler, right? And the, and there was the slapping of the hand. There's some shaking of heads, going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Some slapping of hands. And what I like about this and putting them in a positive way is, you know, like, well, you know, okay, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. What, what can I do? And this is a great, uh, a great lesson. I got some help. Um, I wrote uh, online about uh, from other people about how they put it. 
in positive ways. Um, so today we're talking about the law of God and how it, how it helps us to live in good ways. Can we fold our hands, close our eyes, bow our heads? Uh, gracious God, thank you for your guidance. Help us to understand that your guidance is for our benefit and that, if, that as we seek you and seek to follow you, it will be a blessing to us and those around us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are continuing, continuing along Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, starting at verse 21. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on your way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, calls her to commit, calls, causes her to commit adultery, and what, whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard it said, it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is, it, is, it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Or in different language, blessed are those who yearn for right relationship with God. You will not be disappointed. Remember that Matthew is trying to uh, make of Jesus the new Moses. So Moses on Mount Sinai, and here's Jesus with the Sermon on the Mount. Moses came down with the Ten Commandments, saw the people, threw the stones down, anger, disappointment for those sorry souls. Jesus sees this crowd of sorry souls with all their longing and fear their idolatries and their questions of divine providence. And his first words are blessed. Blessed are you. And then tells them you are salt. You are light. Let your light shine. And now some words of the law. I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. It's like Jesus is picking up the stones of the broken tablets and examining them from different angles. Do you not know how people can kill your spirit with their words? We've all done it to one another. 
Yesterday at the planning we, retreat, we talked about moments when the kingdom of God kind of breaks through. When God is on the throne and we are drawn up and all is right with the world and we just are content and glad in the awesomeness of the moment. Right relationship with God means moments of transcendence. And we all know those hellish moments when somebody's words can drag us down into the pit. Jesus is saying, try not to do that. With your words, with your actions. And when you find your own spirit going in that direction, talk to yourself. Rewrite the tape. Re-record the mantra that you say to yourself. You have heard it said, I hope you burn in hell. Rewrite that. Help me to love them as you love them. One commentator on this passage writes that whenever Jesus is talking about the law, we need to look at it through the lens of the greatest commandment, that we are called to love God with all our hearts, souls, minds, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. So when we look at the law, how is this rule, how is this law, the guidance and expression of God's love? How is it calling us to live in God's love? So you're headed to worship and you realize that you've wronged someone. I don't know, maybe a spouse, a child, a sibling. You weren't at your best. You were not careful with your words. You did not count to ten before you spoke. And you wounded a soul. Go say you're sorry. We talked a little bit about this. Uh, the Daily Devotion Group meets on online Monday to Friday, and I, and I try to tune in at least once a week. And this past week, we were talking about making amends, saying you're sorry. And there's the peace, the, the peace that you can have when you know that you've said what you need to say. You have no control of how the person is going to react to you, but you can have the peace knowing that you have done your part by trying to make it right. I shouldn't have said that thing. I was angry. I have strong feelings about that, and it has taken me until now to find the words to express what I need to say in a way that hopefully keeps me in relationship with you. We may, we may disagree, but I will always love you. And then you might hear words that you never thought about, how your sorry doesn't cut it, that they need more than words, and you need to wrestle with that, because sometimes that's the truth, too. Right relationship isn't easy with God or with one another. At a MICA gathering, MICA is a Mont- Montclair Interfaith Clergy Association met this last week, and one of the, and one of the pastors always comes with some teaching that they're, that they're doing with their congregation, and the teaching this week was on hate because we had just had the rally against hate because of the Molotov cocktail that was thrown at Temple near Tamid in Bloomfield. And a lot of us showed up for that. And this one pastor was exploring, you know, how it is that we hate. And the, it was a really fruitful conversation. And one of the African-American pastors finally said, it's messy. It's messy, and we have to be willing to get messy in having these really tough conversations with one another that are not simplistic, they're not easy but they are loving. Right relationship with God and with one another is worth it. You blessed people, salt of the earth, light keepers of the world. So in these words of Jesus, when he's talking, where you think he he starts out with, he's talking about, you know, uh, you've heard you shouldn't murder someone, but I'm telling you, anger and the words that come out of your mouth. How many commandments is is he tackling here? Choosing God's way, being convicted of our false notions of how we live faithfully. Don't make an idol of your righteous anger. Your words have power. Do not harm. Speak truth. There's a lot there. And then he goes on to talk about adultery and divorce. And by the way, Martin Luther thought that this passage were meant to just humble us. And I felt that when I was reading it through. Like, oh, we're all convicted. We all fall short of the glory of God. 
So Jesus says, if you look at someone with lust in your heart, you've already committed adultery. Oh, really? So guilty, 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 guilty. All of us. And hello, Hollywood. You're not helping. One of my favorite books is Jane Eyre by, by Charlotte Bronte. And it, like Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, I, I, really, I call it smart girls romance novels. Why? Because the main character loves, loves a woman because of her mind. Ah, a girl can dream. <laughs> but back to Jane, the Jane Eyre, the main characters are supposed to be homely. Mr. Rochester and Miss, and Miss Eyre. And I listened to, there's a wonderful BBC version of this that I, that I, that I own, uh, that I liked so much. And I listened to one of the interviews, uh, an interview with one of the producers where she said she had to find, you know, to, that when they were searching for the actor to play Mr. Rochester, that they needed to find somebody who could be dark and moody, but also drop dead gorgeous. And all of us purists are screaming at the screen going, he's supposed to be homely, he's supposed to be ugly. But you know, they weren't going to take the chance on people not watching it. Right? So they went for Drop Dead Gorgeous. Just in case Mr. Rochester didn't tickle your fancy. So, okay, we'll leave English lit and go back to the Bible. Many have made the case that Jesus is telling men to take marriage seriously. It was too easy to get a divorce. Unless, you know, unless, you're, unless your wife has been unfaithful to the husband... And why? Because in, in those days, a woman needed a man to protect her. She had to be under the roof of some man who would protect her, either her father or her husband. And if she didn't have that, then she would be destitute. And, and a destitute woman had two options. She was either going to become a beggar or a prostitute. So Jesus is you know, saying, hey, men, you need to take your commitment seriously here. Like Jesus, who is uh, bringing nuance to these commandments. In the modern era, uh, modern era we approach this passage with, with also nuance and less rigidity. We all know of folks who have gotten divorced, and I do think, you know, and we can all say that, that, um, that divorce, I think there's a lot of immaturity in our, you know, in, in our, how we understand romance and marriage and relationships. And I do think that some folks get divorced too easily. But we all know of somebody that when that divorce was announced, we were like, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. They're free. Praise God. I hope that he can heal. I hope that she can heal and move beyond that. Again, the law of God is not to be used as a battering ram. It is an invitation to right relationship, interpreted through the lens of love, loving God and loving neighbor as we love ourselves. So how many commandments does Jesus tackle in that, in those verses? Honor your commitments, do no harm. If it's not yours, don't take it. Appreciate what you have. Gosh, maybe he tackles all the commandments there. And now finally about swearing. Why bother? Just let your yes be yes and your no be no. Be a person of your word. May your handshake mean something. If you find that something is leading you away from God, choose God again. Words have power. Use them wisely. Jesus' messages con message continues, but this is where our lectionary cuts it for this week. Again, I'm with Martin Luther. This is all meant to humble us, put us on our knees, and not use the law as rocks to throw at one another, but as guidance for us to grow and live into who God called us to be. We live for those moments when the kingdom of God breaks through, when God sits on the throne and we just sit back and are grateful. Here are some ways that can make that happen when we live into God's guidance. As we read in Deuteronomy I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose the ways that lead to life. To God be the glory when we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbors as ourselves. To God be the glory when we hunger and thirst for right relationship. In the name of Jesus, may it be so. Amen.